In this video, we will look at a few examples to practice working with converses, inverses, and contrapositives of conditional statements. In example A, it says use the statement, if n is greater than 2, then n squared is greater than 4. We have to do two things. Find the converse, inverse, and contrapositive, and also determine if the statements from part A are true or false. If they're false, find a counterexample to prove that it is false. So let's look at the original statement. If n is greater than 2, then n squared is greater than 4. Let's first think about, is that true? So if a number is greater than 2, if you were to square it, would that be greater than 4? Now this is true, and you could prove that by just squaring both sides of your inequality, and you'll end up with this conclusion. So that is true. Now we should find the converse, inverse, and contrapositive to see if those are also true. So remember with the converse, all you're doing is switching the hypothesis and the conclusion in your original statement. So that would be if n squared is greater than 4, then n is greater than 2. So all you're doing is switching the original hypothesis and conclusion. If n squared is greater than 4, then n is greater than 2. Now this is not necessarily true because of negative numbers. What if we had, for example, the number n equals negative 3? Well, negative 3 squared is 9, because a negative times a negative is a positive, and 9 is greater than 4, so that would be true, but that's an example where n is not greater than 2. So negative 3 squared is greater than 4, but it's not greater than 2, so that would be a counterexample. So that is something to remember, that just because a statement is true doesn't mean that its converse will also be true. If that does happen to be the case, where a statement and its converse is true, that's where it's a biconditional statement. All right, next we have our inverse, and to get the inverse, you negate both parts of the original sentence. So that would be if n is not greater than 2, then n squared is not greater than 4. Now the symbol I used is not necessarily correct. You wouldn't really have a greater than with a line through it. So we should think about what does it mean to not be greater than 2? Well, if you're not greater, that means that you're less than or equal to 2. And same thing over here, less than or equal to 4. That's sort of the opposite of being greater than. All right, so if n is less than or equal to 2, then n squared is less than or equal to 4. So let's think about if that's true. Well, again, we're actually thrown off by those negatives because if we thought about a negative number, like again, negative 3, negative 3 is less than or equal to 2, so we're good for the first part, but negative 3 squared is 9, which is not less than or equal to 4. So n equals negative 3 is a counterexample to this statement. All right, and finally, the contrapositive. The contrapositive is always created by sort of a combination of both the converse and the inverse. So we're going to both negate and switch the two parts of the original sentence. So that would be if n squared is less than or equal to 4, then n is less than or equal to 2. So I just took the inverse and switched the two parts, but that would be the same thing as taking the converse and negating both of them. So if n squared is less than or equal to 4, then n is less than or equal to 2. And this is going to be true. And actually, the contrapositive is always true if the original statement is true. So the truth values of both of these are always the same. Um, but you could think about it, and you'd realize you wouldn't be able to find any counterexample to that statement. All right, at this point, we're going to go to example C which says the following is a true statement. The measure of angle ABC is greater than 90 degrees if and only if angle ABC is an obtuse angle. Determine the two true statements within this biconditional. So a biconditional is when an original statement and its converse are true. So that's what we're actually trying to pull out here, the original statement and the converse. So we just have to think about both parts of this. We could start out with the measure of angle ABC is greater than 90, and if that's true, then angle ABC is an obtuse angle. 
So that's one way of organizing that information. If the angle is greater than 90, then it is obtuse. The other way would just be the other way around, which would basically be the converse of this statement. So if angle ABC is an obtuse angle, then the measure of angle ABC has to be greater than 90 degrees.